So I'm set at 15 on the depth, 50 on the length because I'm using 100mm dominoes, 10mm cutter and my little jig and I can get the long ones in across there and the short ones will fit there, the fatter ones I'll just have to move these a little bit. For these bottom bottom rails, you see two, it's not quite enough. Really I need a third in there. So just to try it out, I put the stop the first stop against there like I've been doing. Then the first stop against there gave me that one. And then the first stop against there again. Put that there. And I've still got room to get me railing. So that's what I'll do. And I'll recut these these styles to suit. Right, this timber's 30mm thick, normally I make me tenons 10mm thick, or a third of the timber, but I haven't got any proper dominoes, so ages ago I practiced making dominoes. Yeah. Alright, I've made these grooves with a, a finger cutter, just for jointing boards. Not necessary as you've seen in my other bits, but what is necessary that you leave that, that little lip on the edge there. I'm going to use these because I haven't got any proper dominoes. Right for the panels, just have a look, see what I've got. Either 9mm MDF, there's a couple of pieces there, but too small, or 9mm ply. I think, I think it's going to be these. They're about the right width, so I just need to cut them to length, or cut them to width as well. So I've just roughly cut a couple of pieces to length, they're oversized at the moment, but just sitting one of these together like that. I put a groove in about half inch, and then I cut the panel 10mm either way, bigger, so that's 285, so I want a panel 305. I'll cut them to length later. If I rip them down to 305, that'll give me a little rip that I can use as a template for setting up the groove that I'm going to put in now. I'm going to leave this rip blade in. It's quite sharp, but I'm running along the grain on the on the faces anyway, so it should give me a clean cut. Plus, it's growing in, going in a groove, so it won't really matter. But I know it'll give me quite a clean cut. So. Set that up at 305 and I've set the blade down. You don't want it too high, you want it just coming across. The shallower the cut, the less breakout you'll get on the back. If it's if it's quite high like that, it's cutting straight down almost, so it'll break out, but when it's cutting at an angle like that, it's sort of shearing it off, if you know what I mean. When I'm cutting these, I'm obviously holding it against the fence with my left hand, but also, as I'm going through, this thumb is pushing like that, and also my hand is, is pushing like that. So as I'm going through, I'm keeping it pressed against the fence. If you just push it in, it'll drift like that, and it could jam into the blade and kick, unless you put the rip fence on, which I haven't. But yeah, you want to push from this side, not that side. The centre might be okay, but you want to be slightly towards the blade so that everything is naturally pushing towards the fence. But I'm also twisting like that. And I've got a couple of little pieces, they're not much, but they're enough to 
to set up my groove. You see, fairly clean cut on there. And for the groove, I've got this cutter that's set up at about 9mm. Every board I buy seems to be a slightly different thickness. So I've always got to run them through twice, maybe tweak it a little bit. And this router is a TR A011, something like that, a Triton router. It's got a locking, I don't know what you call it, a thing that you push in here and that allows you to turn it. You have to take a spring out that goes in a groove there and I took this out because it fills with rubbish. It fills with crap, does that thing? But that lets you turn it up. There's this handle thing that co it comes with. It's supposed to go in there to allow for fine adjustment. I can never quite get it to locate. It's a pain, so I don't bother with that. I just reach under and use this fine adjustment knob here. There's a locking switch that's a bit fiddly. Turn it off, and then you've got to close this guard. I think that guard's supposed to just flick over, but it doesn't. With that guard over now, you can wind it up, and there's a locking pin just here that automatically locks. And that now is above the table. It's got a double lock on, like my Makita, so you can unlock it and then turn it a bit. You've got to unlock it again. Sit that one in. I could put the... I could put that in. is going to be above the table. This is a trend plate. I need to remake this whole thing again. But it's done its job. So now I can set that depth. You see that? Locks in. graduated and then at the back here there's a locking handle what I find is when you lock it off and you run it for a little bit if you want to wind it down it seems to sort of settle so before you unlock it you have to wind that up until it's tight unlock it and then it won't drop down because if you just want a fine adjustment it suddenly drops <laughs> and you're starting again I need to know this depth, so I'll work that out and set my depth. Okay, so that is very slightly higher than that, so I'll set that slightly higher than that. You see, that's where one of the stops goes, that's the next down, or up, should I say. And that's the one below but now using the fine adjustment I'll wind it down quite good there's a little bit of, a bit of movement in the handle if you don't push that in but for 200 quid it's a mid-range machine so I'm quite happy with that so I'm gonna go at that so I'll lock it off at that get it as close as lock one off and it'll pivot on that one now 
Now I can move this end in and out to fine adjust it. But I want about 12 mil from the face there to the fence. And this little block of wood that I use for the height is about 13 mil. Set that to that, lock it off, ready to go. All my timbers I'll run through with the face side down. So if you've got different sized timbers, at least all your faces will be flush. And I'll just run them through. Could put a backer board on this so just the cut is showing. But I know that it doesn't help too much. It helps with the big breakout, but this edge always ends up getting burred over, so you don't get a perfect cut. because I made these grooves about half inch deep that gives me a couple of mil to play with I've already ripped these down but all I've got to do is add 20 mil to these inside measurements so about 5.55 there so I'll cross cut these at 5.75 I should be able to do it on there I need to take them off really to get it I should be able to just lift it a little bit and I've got my new blade in so hopefully I won't get too much breakout on the other side. I'll square one end up first. A little bit but it'll be okay. Like that. So the top one stops the break out. There's a little bit on the bottom, we don't matter. A dry fit just to make sure everything's all right. There's no dominoes in it yet, but the flush, the panel fits. I'm going to get it glued up. So I'm going to use this stuff to glue it together because it goes off quite fast. It says 30 minutes, but I'll give it an hour or so. And I've got to make some beading while that's drying. I've got to match this. So that's one glued up. That was special. Glue in the holes, dominoes, bang it together. Little stick helps poke it in the holes. And I made these things. They're just just bits of wood with grooves in. They stop stop my clamps falling over. Measured it corner to corner just to check that it's square. I'll put that aside and get the other one done. And that's number two glued together. It's important you get your clamps straight across like that. And measure corner to corner. And to be able to do that you need to leave your packers short so you can get your tape on that corner. And also help so that you can see that corner there. If you find you're out of square, 
you can make these clamps I'll put these clamps at an angle like that and as you tighten it up it'll pull it'll pull it to the to the shape that you want you know pull it square that's why it's important to put them on straight in the first place if you do put them on at an angle like that it'll pull it out of square but all these joints are cut square and that's why I bought an expensive machine because I want consistent square cuts it makes life easier in the end and then when you stack them you need to sight them through the front edge and the back edge you could put sticks on top called winding rods winding sticks that help you see that but for whatever reason I need to put that packer under there to make them parallel We'll see.